we want to graph the hyperbola. We want to find the equation of the hyperbola and sketch a graph of the hyperbola with vertices at plus or minus 3, 0, and foci at plus or minus 5, 0. Let's see how we do that. Um, here's the vertices, and here's the foci. I put them in with letters. You would just put them in with dots, but I just wanted to kind of make sure which one was which. So the vertices are the O's, and the, and the foci are the X's. And the first thing we need to do is figure out our key parameters and our key choices. So the first thing we need to know is which way is the hyperbola opening. Remember, it can open up, down, or left, right. Well, it always open the major axis is always the direction which way, which way it's opening. And the major axis has the foci and the vertices on it. And that's, so that's the x-axis here. And so it opens left, right. OK. And then we need to get our a, b, and c. Well, no, now that we know it's opening left, right, we know how to write it, write the standard form. It's x squared over a squared minus y squared over b squared equals 1. And the way you can remember that is if it's opening left, right, it's going to be more left, right, more in the x direction. So the x is going to be sort of the bigger one. And so the x being bigger, you subtract off the smaller, you're going to get 1. So a fair, kind of a hand wavy way to say it, but that's, that's the way I think about it, is it's bigger minus smaller gives you positive. And so if it's opening in the x direction, that's the one that's going to be the plus sign. OK, so we just need to figure out a and b. Well, the a here, the thing with the plus sign, doesn't always have to be x or, or y, but whichever is coming in with the plus sign, that's going to be where the vertices are. The vertices are going to be where, if you set y equals 0, it's where the actual curve crosses. Vertices are actual points on the curve. They cross the x-axis where y equals 0. You cover that up, you get x squared over a squared equals 1, or x is plus or minus a. So the a value here, a is going to be equal to 3 because um, that's going to be the plus or the vertice, vertex value is going to be the a. Okay, so we got a equals 3, but we don't know b. What we do know is c, which is our usual notation for the position of the, fo the coordinate of the foci. Okay, so we know we're given that c equals 5. That's our name for how far, it's really how far the foci are, or how far is each fo focus from the center. Given that the center is the origin, well, we probably should have checked that right at the start. We're doing everything with center at the origin so far, but we're going to shift them pretty soon. Everything here is symmetrical around the origin, so it's pretty clear the center is going to be there. So here's five units away from the center is the focus, so the C is going to be five. Okay, and then the crucial thing you have to remember is how those are related. It's a little different from the ellipse situation. It's C squared is A squared plus B squared. And, uh, you know, a good way to remember that is the focus here of a hyperbola, very much opposite to the case for an ellipse, the focus is further away from the, the center than the vertex is. And so that's why it's going to be C squared is A squared plus B squared, so that the C ends up bigger, definitely, definitely bigger than A. Okay, so that's gonna that's pretty easy. So that's uh, we get 25 because that's the c squared equals 9 plus b squared. Okay, and I picked a really easy example. B is gonna be plus or minus 4, but we always choose plus, so b is gonna be 4. Okay, so now we're 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 set because we have the equation, and then from there it's really not hard. It's x squared over 3 squared which is just a fancy way of saying 9, but I'm just going to emphasize the standard form. Minus y squared over 4 squared equals 1. a equals 3, b equals 4. Now we're back in the situation where, in the other video, where we just start drawing the box. We draw the box that's going to lead us to the asymptotes, and so the corners of the box are just plus or minus 3 comma plus or minus 4. So here's the four new points we plot. You don't have to make them x's. You can just make them dots. And so those are the, the going to be the corners of the box. And so let, let me show you the box. Already pre. Now these should be segments. Um, this program doesn't draw line segments very well. So, or I don't know how to make it draw line segments very well. So you would just draw the box here. Okay. So remember the cool thing about that box is that that helps you draw an ellipse and two families, and a, or a pair of hyperbolas rather. 
Um, but we're just going to use it to draw the single hyperbola with the foci here and the uh, vertices here. And so the next step is you just use the corners of the box. You connect the corners of the box to make your asymptotes. So just to these two diagonal lines are going to be your asymptotes. And now we know that the two points that we know are on the hyperbola from the very start. We've known that the, these two points were on the hyperbola. They were vertices. And we just draw, just freehand in something that goes through that, never goes inside the box, and has the slants, the slanting lines as the asymptotes. And here it is. Boom. Okay, and for I don't know why it changed the font on my X's and O's in this last one. It's very funny. But uh, there's the actual hyperbola. And um, and again, you the dotted lines, you'd have just this box here and then the, the asymptotes. And you wouldn't have the dotted lines out here. Sorry about that. But there's the process. So the only thing that's really different from this and the other video is this very first, first few steps, getting using this crucial equation, knowing C and A to get B. And then you're off and running with the, with the regular method of graphing. Um, another way this problem could have been presented, just real quick, is let's just go down to the end. We could have said um, sketch the hyperbola, huh, if I could type, it would be helpful, with, let's say, um, given the vertices still, given the vertices plus or minus 3 comma 0, and asymptotes. They could have given the asymptotes. Let's say y equals plus or minus, come on, uh, 4x over 3. That would turn out to be the same hyperbola. They're not giving us the foci. So here we'd have to do things a little bit backwards. We have to figure out um, still what the b is and the c. So let's see how that would work. Well, we always know that the asymptotes, as long as it's going through the center, are just given by plus or minus b over a x. And uh, that's a master formula for the asymptotes that we can remember. Well, that tells us what the b is going to be for. Okay, so that tell it's another way of figuring out the b equals equal to four. And then we still have c squared equals a squared plus b squared. In this situation, we weren't given c, but that's equal to twenty-five, nine plus sixteen, because we figured out b, and so c equals five. And so we can plot those foci, even if those weren't given to us. So it's all about pattern matching. And the y equals plus or minus b over a x is a useful thing to remember. If you, if you don't remember that, you can still get it from the box. You can say, okay, I want the box. The box is so cool. You just take these vertices, you go ahead and plot those, and then you plug the vertex values into this y equation. If you plug in x equals plus or minus 3, you're going to get y equals plus or minus 4. You're going to get those box values. okay? And then the height of the box is, you just want to remember, the height of the box is 4, that's b. And then you still definitely need the c squared equals a squared plus b, plus b squared. But the other thing, so the other way to, to do it, just real briefly, alternate way, besides memorizing y equals plus or minus b over ax, which is a good thing to memorize, though, is that um, find the corners of the box by plugging in vertex x values and getting the y values from the formula that you're given for the asymptotes and then those y values are um, are plus or minus b. Those are going to be plus or minus b. In other words, the top and bottom, the size of the box. Okay, that's a good place to stop.